Hey everybody, so um, I haven't made a video in a while. I've been um, busy with the start of the school year. Start of the school year, it's eight weeks in, but but you know, still kind of busy. I'm here at uh, Chengdu's Shisha High School, which is one of the programs where I work um, as the academic principal program director uh, for the academic side. Um, and I just thought I'd make a quick video to upload to my channel especially with the election only less than 48 hours away. Um, I know personally, depending on how things go in that election, will depend a lot upon my, my future desire to, to live in the United States. Uh, if, if Trump were to win again, I think, I think I will probably look to permanently expatriate to another country by property in Spain or something. Um, so anyway, a lot of people who check out channels like this may, may be uh, wondering about with COVID not looking any better and looking worse in Europe, um, are there opportunities and, and to, to, to get out? <laughs> and so I just want to let people know, I've made some videos about sort of living and working in China. Um, now is a really great time if you are a teacher uh, or if you're not a teacher and looking for uh, opportunities abroad uh, now is a great time to come to China. Um, there's uh, virtually no local transmission of the virus here at this point. Um, we have uh, a minor outbreak in Xinjiang, which you may have heard about in the news. Uh, prior to that, we had a minor outbreak in Qingdao. Um, and uh, just, just to sort of give you guys a little background on how things are, are working with stuff like this, the Qingdao outbreak is one that I can talk a little bit about. Um, the every city in China uh, that's receiving people from overseas, uh, mostly Chinese nationals returning home, but foreigners as well uh, coming to China for work, um, they have they have to quarantine for two weeks. So if you fly into China right now, you have to quarantine as soon as you get to the airport. People in big white suits are going to do a COVID test. Um, they're going to do two COVID tests. They're going to do the, the amino acid test, the antibody test to see if you have it or if you had it. Um, regardless, they're going to take you to a hotel uh, in a van with the other people from your flight um, and everybody in white suits, um, you know, hazmat suits. They're going to take you, you're going to check into a hotel where you're going to stay for two weeks for quarantine. Uh, some people are getting away with only a week if they already live in China uh, and then they have to go quarantine, self-quarantine in their home for a week after. But two weeks in a hotel paid for by you. Um, it's usually a hotel that costs a few hundred RMB, uh, so you know, $60 a night, so it's not too expensive. Uh, meals are provided, um, but you will have no contact with anybody. You will be quarantined by yourself in a room. Um, and uh, if people do test positive, then they're transferred to a designated COVID hospital in the town. And so what happened in Qingdao was that there was somebody who was positive. They uh, went to a, the designated COVID hospital, which was called like the Qingdao Chest Hospital, I think it was called. It's like respiratory hospital. Um, that's the designated COVID hospital in Qingdao. And, and you know, now because the epidemic is pretty much over in China, we, you know, typically a place like Qingdao, pretty, you know, medium-sized tier two city will have, um, you know, like five or six people that have COVID that came in overseas and at any one time in the hospital. I think in, in Sichuan right now, we have like 12 cases uh, and they're all people who've come in from overseas. They, they, they got to the airport, test positive, boom, right into the hospital for observation um, in isolation. So what happened was they gave... Uh, as you do, they gave one of the COVID patients a CAT scan and uh, somebody didn't clean the room very well. And uh, a regular patient at the hospital uh, or a worker, I can't remember which, came in, used that room and got infected. The right? next customer came and got infected. Um, and it then spread to about a dozen people. Um, they tested the entire population of 9 million people in Qingdao. Um, I had a friend here in Chengdu uh, who said, oh, they, he's like, that's BS. Like, they can't test that many people in, in a few days. I'm like, well, they can if you do the mass testing, right? If you take, if you take 20, 30 people and put all of their results in one test tube, you, you certainly can test 9 million people. And they found no other infections, but they had isolated um, the 12 people, the 6 and then 12, 6 and 6. So the 12 people that wound up getting infected, they isolated them. So my point here is, is that 
China feels like they have this under control. People are nervous about a second wave coming in the wintertime, but whenever there is a spike in cases somewhere, um, immediately measures are taken. Day to day here in Chengdu, we're kind of a laid back city um, and people are not wearing masks anymore. Uh, I have a mask in my pocket all the time in case someone wants to give me a hard time. The guys at shopping malls and other public buildings who are supposed to check your temperature, uh, they don't really do it. Um, they're kind of sitting there on their phone. Um, but if stuff got serious, everything's in place to do it again. So um, China does feel like they're on, they, they've got control over this to a great extent. And so what that means is that it is possible to enter China on a work visa or a business visa at this point. Um, and you just have to uh, obviously pay for an airline ticket and, and all that stuff. So job opportunities abound right now. Um, for teachers, I'm not hiring, so don't ask me if I can give you a job. Um, the programs that I work with, we all have our, our teachers pretty much. Um, but a lot of my friends who uh, are in the education industry are looking for um, really anybody to come over to, to teach in training schools, to teach English, to teach science, to teach really anything that you can. Um, and so it is a great opportunity for some of you. Um, the usual um, requirements are still there. So um, you need a clean criminal background. You cannot have um, any sorts of serious crimes in your past, obviously. Um, even misdemeanors like drunk driving or something that may disqualify you from getting a work visa. So keep that in mind. Um, see my other videos for more information about that. So clean, clean criminal background. You need to have a bachelor's degree um, and you need to uh, have your diploma uh, notarized and authenticated by the Chinese embassy. All that stuff is fun. Um, you will need two years teaching experience or pass a 120 hour online TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language course in order to qualify. That's something you can pay for at home and you can, you can bang out over a couple of days. Um, what I would suggest, a few suggestions, suggestion number one is that if you do start looking into relocating to China, um, you remember that um, you are gonna need um, to pay for a flight. And I would put that into any negotiation with a company that you're talking to about a job right now in China is I would say like, hey, you know, the flight's really expensive for me to get there and you're gonna have to buy my ticket, right? And just just see what they say, right? The worst they can say is no, right? Um, but you know, they may be willing to if you're the right person for the job and they need somebody. Um, you know, the ads a couple months ago in the summertime were saying, you gotta be in China. Uh, we're looking for a kindergarten teacher, but you got to be in China. Now they're saying, like, we're looking for a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> we need somebody. So, um, so that's that's promising. So, uh, negotiate that. The other thing to consider is that when you get here, you are going to have to do a two week quarantine um, in a hotel uh, at your expense. Now, what a lot of companies are doing right now is they're saying we will start paying you your salary during your two weeks of quarantine. So even though you're not working, we're still gonna pay you as though you are. Now they're not gonna pay you when you arrive. So you're gonna to have to foot the bill for the hotel um, and the, the cost on that's variable and it's hard to predict it before you get here. So, um, and then beyond that, um, this is always true moving to China because I know things are tough for a lot of people right now. Um, when you move to most cities in China uh, and you're looking at rent for an apartment, you're looking at paying about five months rent up front. Um, and the reason for that is uh, you're gonna have one month security deposit, one month realtor fee, and then they usually collect rent quarterly in China. So you pay three months at a time. So you pay your three months rent, your one month security deposit, plus you're usually a month to the realtor. Um, the, or the agent that you work with. So five months rent, what does that mean? Um, you know, here in, apartment prices are variable, but here in Chengdu, you can get a very nice apartment for around 2,500 RMB, which uh, is 600, $700 a month. Um, but you're gonna need five months. So you're gonna need, um, you know, five months rent up front. Um, now, the way things work in, in China, usually you're gonna have a, um, a housing allowance through your company. Um, I think you're not gonna have a lot of luck asking for a company in China to give you a bunch of money before you arrive. Um, and so, again, getting them to buy the airline ticket for you is a possibility. 
um, getting them to give you money for housing up front, probably not a possibility. A hotel up front, not a possibility. But if you have that money set aside uh, to do your quarantine um, and then to get an apartment, which is a normal thing you have to do, um, this is really a great time uh, to consider moving here. You know, again, life here is, is really back to normal. And I know that things in Europe and things in the United States are getting really bad. Uh, so it might be time to consider something you haven't considered before, but, but China's kind of open for business. So figured I'd put that out there. Um, and certainly any questions in the comments, check out my other videos, uh, for more information about living and working in China. Some of them are a little older. My work visa video needs an update, but it's still got some accurate information about how to get a work visa. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm compared to the stress of life in any country where this, this virus is still out of control. Um, I really feel blessed uh, to have have missed it in China initially because I was on vacation in America and then came to China right at the tail end of it and, and just never really had to experience a lot of the problems here other than minor inconveniences of not being able to go to my favorite restaurants and bars for a couple of weeks in uh, late spring um, where they were still trying to figure things out. But since then, life has been pretty normal and uh, all of us here, all of us expats here, uh, are just always like, wow, we are really lucky to be where we are. Um, so there you go.